Good morning, and I do mean morning. Happy Grief Table Day to you. I, uh, I'm Glenn Worthington, and I am literally the guy who wrote the book on diamonds in Arkansas. And I'm running a grief table today, and it's uh, pretty pretty simple. If if you ran dry rocks across grief, they would all stick. If you ran wet rocks across grief, they'll all run off. Well, diamonds have a unique characteristic. They are hydrophobic. They are non-wettable. You cannot wet a diamond. It repels water. So, <coughs> I'm running a bunch of fine gravel across here. These are my centers, my heaviest material. There's a uh, spinel, uh, chromium spinel, pyrope garnet, chromium diopside, other heavy minerals, maybe some barite in this as well. Just my heavies that I don't want to take a lot of time looking through. And some of this is really fine. I uh, have a 30 mesh screen and a, a plice jig. So I'm able to take the real fine silty material and jig it and get my heavy, my concentrate. And then uh, <clears throat> I've saved them up for a while. I've got two five gallon buckets to run and I'm just feeding it slowly. Uh, there are some other <laughs> gravel catching here, but it's just because I didn't smooth the uh, the grease real real smooth there I put it on with a putty knife in this direction instead of this direction in case I I did leave a little ripple or something it would kind of catch the diamonds slow them down as they're going downhill here see that that goes pretty quick and and you don't want to miss a chance to catch a diamond so it won't hurt if there's some other rocks caught in here. It's minimizing what I have to look through later with a magnifying light. So this is actually a two coffee cup process. I'm scooping the gravel and feeding it with a coffee cup. But because this is early morning, I have to have this other coffee cup. I got up before breakfast. I wanted to get out here and get going on this because grease is very sensitive. The temperature of that grease needs to be between 65 and 70 degrees. And because otherwise, if it's too cold, everything will run off. If it's too hot, everything will stick. So you want it between 65 and 70. And the forecast for Last night they said the forecast was going to be a low of 68 degrees. I thought, perfect. Well, I got up this morning before the rooster and it was 66 degrees. So that's right in our range. And although this equipment's not sitting outside, I have it inside of a metal building, a workshop. I had the door open all night last night so that uh, it would be the same temperature inside as outside. So we're right at 66 degrees and the sun is coming up. Oh, speaking of sun coming up and this coffee cup, that reminds me, uh, this is a special coffee cup I had made. I found a 2.04 karat yellow diamond at the crater and this is a photo of that diamond I've got it on my coffee cup this is the Easter sunrise diamond and uh, this this helps me wake up when when the sun rises so, anyway back to what we're doing just slowly so to explain if you didn't watch my other video about setting up the grease table it's just a sloped table with some steps and I think that's so that the diamond will drop and like stick in the grease is the only reason I can grasp with the steps. But anyway, this 
I did not make this. This is an actual grease table from South Africa. So this is what they use, and the, the grease is the beer's grease. Um, <clears throat> you think of grease as like the black, nasty stuff that you use on cars or trucks. No, this is more like a wax. I would almost call it a wax table instead of a grease table. I imagine there's some paraffin in this and some like Vaseline petroleum jelly and lamp oil. I've heard there's a recipe where you can mix those three and get a good grease for a grease table. They've been using grease for more than 100 years to catch diamonds because they learned early on that diamonds are hydrophobic and this is one way to separate diamonds from the other gravel. What I'll do when I'm done running all this, well, let me explain the process here. So I'm recycling my water. I'm I'm running, this water's running over. See, you can tell I've got this level because I have a good even flow of water across here. It's not like all my water's over on one side. It's all water falling off of this whole thing. And I just drop the gravel on here and it washes it across the grease. And, uh, <clears throat> So the way this works, I don't have like a garden hose hooked up and feeding city water to this because I don't know what the city water temperature is. You need to maintain your grease between 65 and 70 degrees for the reasons I expressed moments ago. If I were to add hot water or cold water, it would uh, change the temperature of the grease and it wouldn't work right. Either I would catch all the rocks or I wouldn't catch anything, not even the diamonds. So, <clears throat> not only, I, I put the grease on last night and have the night air uh, bring it to a temperature of 66. I was sweating in here when I put the grease on last night. I do have an air conditioner in this building and I could air condition it, but hey, if it's gonna be, 66, 68 degrees anyway, uh, I just not even run the air conditioner, just use the air temperature. <clears throat> but anyway, I, I, I put the grease on last night so that it could cool down with the night air and become between 65 and 70 degrees. I also brought the gravel in here so it would be between 65 and 70 degrees because you don't want to put hot gravel on the grease and then it, everything would stick. And the water is also between 65 and 70 degrees and I've got backup water too. What I'm doing, I'm not running the city water because I don't know what the temperature is. I'm recirculating it. So the water goes down to the wash tub and collects with the gravel that I will later throw away and there's a pump sitting up on a concrete block because you don't want it down in the gravel and be sucking gravel up and putting back here but the uh, it's a little they call it a garden hose pump and you can see why it's just a little garden hose pump that puts the water back in here and the water goes into this vat and then goes water falls over here and uh, it's probably time I ought to scoop some of the gravel out and I've got a bucket here I can put this in oh it's not too deep yet but anyhow I'll leave the water and take the gravel down well, I'll end up taking two five-gallon buckets of gravel out of here because I'm putting two five-gallon buckets of gravel across here. But it's not a hard process. It's not really a nasty process either. You know, you think grease would be awful to mess with. It's like, oh man, I wouldn't want to do a grease table. I'll do it some other way. But this is like a wax table, like I said. Uh, in the past, some of the results at the Crater of Diamonds have not been very promising. 
and I believe a lot of it is because they did their grease table wrong. For one thing, it's noted they use sheep fat. Now, I don't know if that's great stuff to use for catching diamonds or not. Sounds kind of nasty to me, but anyway, it may or may not be ideal. De Beers experimented with a lot of different greases and came up with the DB43. And that's the recipe they like. And it's no longer available. You can't purchase it. But I do have a 55 gallon drum of it. I worked in diamond exploration and recovery for three years outside the state park. And when the company shut down and laid everybody off, they hauled a lot of stuff away <coughs> when they sold the equipment to Canada. But they left the 55 gallon drum of grease and nobody else wanted it, I guess, because it's too heavy and they didn't know how to move it. And I just brought my refrigerator dolly and took it. They said it was fine for me to have. Nobody wanted it. Why leave it up there in the woods? So I've had it for a long time and the grease is actually reusable. It's just like wax. So what I'll do here in a little bit when I get done running this gravel across here slowly, I'll shut the water off. I'll take the putty knife and I'll, I'll scrape all the wax or grease off of the table and I'll put it in this pan and it'll probably only come up to there or so. So then I'll fill the pan with water up to about here and put it on the stove in the kitchen and heat it until all the wax melts. When it melts, the diamonds that were uh, in the wax will be released and the wax will float to the top because it's, it's oil based. The wax will float to the top and the water will go to the bottom and the diamonds will be on the very bottom. Then you just let this cool. You just don't do anything. All you do is put the wax in here that has the diamonds in the wax and the water in here and heat it up. And once it melts and you stir it and everything, just shut the heat off and walk away from it. Come back later and it will have cooled. And you can take a knife and just cut the wax off the top and you can reuse the grease. Wax, grease, whatever. Uh, you can cut that off and it's reusable. And then there'll be water, so the grease on the top, and then there'll be water down here. And you slowly pour the water off and then there'll be several grains in the bottom and that's your diamond. So, I'm looking forward to seeing how many diamonds this uh, <clears throat> probably about 10 gallons of gravel will yield. And I just didn't want to sort through all of this. It, it takes a lot of time and I'd, I'd rather be washing and finding other diamonds, you know, bigger diamonds, than going through this little stuff grain by grain. Anyhow, grease table's a pretty good deal. Saves a lot of time. Well, in the past, at the Bureau of the Mines, and I think 1944, did a sampling at what is now Crater of Diamond State Park because diamonds were needed for the war effort. World War II, diamonds for industrial use were needed to machine parts to build airplanes and tanks and other equipment. So they needed diamonds for the war effort and De Beers was on the side of Germany and didn't want to sell any diamonds to the U.S. So Franklin Roosevelt was excited to hear there was a source for diamonds in the United States. So he, um, as government officials do, he said, well, let's study this thing. So. They uh, wide bore drilled several places and hauled all of the material to Rolla, Missouri, and they ran it across a grease table in the winter, and it wasn't heated, and they didn't find any diamonds. Big wonder that grease was part of linoleum if you don't run it at the right temperature. So some people who didn't know what they were doing were hired by the government to 
sample for diamonds and had poor results because they did it wrong. Also, the Glen Martin plant was not heated or air conditioned, and this is post World War II, so right after that. They had grease tables, and they didn't heat or cool it, so they probably found diamonds on the mornings when it was between 65 and 70 degrees. And if you've ever lived in Arkansas, it's not that temperature very often, or for very long. So anyhow, I think they missed a lot of diamonds because it wasn't done right. Grease is a great thing if you know how to use it and will do it with the right temperature and all. But if you don't follow the rules, you don't find the diamonds. So that's pretty much it. You don't need to sit here and watch me run my two coffee cups all morning. But thank you for joining me, and hopefully you learned a few things about how to, a grease table works. It's, it's old tried and true technology, and uh, this really should catch some diamonds here. So uh, thank you for joining me again, and uh, check back. We'll have other things we'll talk about in the future.